So continuing with the knee anatomy video series, here in this video we will discuss about the meniscal anatomy. So from our previous knowledge, we know that meniscus are important part of our knee joint and they perform various functions such as filling the joints, lubrication of the joints. So we have the two meniscus, we have the medial meniscus and we have the lateral meniscus. So features common to the both meniscus is that we have the two edges, two ends or horns and two surfaces. So we have two edges, we have the inner edge, we have the outer edge, we have the two horn, anterior horn and a broader posterior horn and we have two surfaces, we have the superior surface and the inferior surface. Now talking about the two edges, the outer edge is basically a fixed edge which is attached to the capsule outside. So medial, side, medial meniscus is more firmly attached to the capsule and lateral meniscus is less firmly attached to the capsule. But in both cases, the peripheral edge, they are fixed to the outer capsule. Plus they are convex while the inner edge, inner edge in the both meniscus, it is a free edge and it is a concave edge and it is not attached to the any structure. So this was about the two edges outer and the inner edges. Talking about the two ends, we have the anterior horn and we have the posterior horn. In both cases, posterior horn is broader and the anterior edge of the both are connected with each other via intermeniscal transverse ligament, which is not shown here in this diagram. So both the anterior horns of the both the menisca, they are connected via intermeniscal transverse ligament. Also, these horns are attached to the, the crucial ligament. Now, in case of the lateral meniscus, this, these two horns, anterior and the posterior horns, they are attached to the crucial ligament. But here, in case of the medial meniscus, they are only attached to the underlying tibia surface. So, we have the, lastly, we have the two surfaces. We have the superior surface, which is a concave surface because it articulates with the overlying femur bone an inferior surface which is a flat surface because of the flat contour of the tibial plateau. Now talking about the individual anatomy, so in medial meniscus, so medial meniscus is a basically a C-shaped structure. So it is a C-shaped structure whereas lateral meniscus is more a circular structure. So here it is larger radius, here it is a smaller radius of the circle. Plus talking about the covering the articular surface, so we know that Medial, medial tibial plateau is a broader and extends in AP dimension and in the medial lateral dimension it is broader than the lateral tibial plateau. So the lateral meniscus it covers the more of the articulating surface of the tibia while the medial meniscus it covers the less articulating surface of the tibia. So we have discussed that it is a C shaped, it is a circular shaped, it is a larger but it covers the, this lateral covers the more articular surface. Now talking about the attachment, so we have, we have discussed that the medial meniscus is more firmly attached to the capsule plus it is attached to the underlying tibia by the various coronary ligaments, meniscotibial ligaments, various coronary ligaments which provide a firm attachment of the medial meniscus to the underlying tibia. Whereas in case of lateral meniscus, it is less firmly attached to the capsule. Because here on the posterior lateral surface, we have a hiatus, popliteus hiatus for the popliteus tendon. So which provides a less firm attachment of the meniscus to the capsule, lateral capsule. But at the same time, it is more attached to the femur bone with the help of the various ligaments. So lateral meniscus is less firmly attached to the capsule, but it is more firmly attached to the femur by the ligaments of the Humphrey and the Risberg. So we have two ligaments. So the posterior horn over the posterior side is attached to the overlying femur by the two ligaments, by ligaments of Humphrey and the Risberg. So this provides attachment to the femur. So lateral meniscus, it moves with the femur during the rotation. So this is the reason for the, the less prone to injury of injury to the lateral meniscus. So lateral meniscus is less prone to injury because it is less firmly attached to the capsule and it moves with the femur during the rotation because of these ligaments, Humphrey and the Risberg. So 
from the name Humphrey and the Risberg since H comes if before W here also the ligament of Humphrey is anterior to the PCL whereas ligament of the Risberg is posterior to the PCL and also we have discussed that the lateral meniscus they are more attached to the crucial ligament while the medial medial meniscus is not at all attached to the crucial ligament so because of the more firm nature of attachment to the capsule the medial meniscus is more prone to the injury now talking about the arrangement of the the various structures over the tibial plateau so this is by the mnemonic so since so i have remembered through this mnemonic M is for medial meniscus anterior horn, C is the crucial ligament. So if it is anterior, it is anterior crucial ligament. L is the lateral meniscus anterior horn. Here it is the lateral meniscus posterior horn. M is the medial meniscus posterior horn. And again C is the crucial ligament, posterior crucial ligament. So I have remembered it by medical college. So since I belong to Punjab, so it is medical college Ludhiana. So you can use any name, city name of the your city or any known city so i have remembered from the name of ludhiana so medical college ludhiana ludhiana medical college so this is the sequence i have remembered so revising it again so we have the medial meniscus then we have the crucial ligament lateral meniscus anterior horn lateral meniscus posterior horn then posterior horn of the medial meniscus and lastly we have the posterior crucial ligament now talking about the microscopic structure of the meniscus so it is composed of type 1 collagen fibers along with some of the type 3 and the elastin structure now orientation of the fibers it is circumferential plus there is a additional radial and the perforating fibers so most of the fibers are arranged in circumferential manner but we have the sum of the radial and the perforating fibers which provides the additional strength to the meniscus structure Then talking about the vascular supply, so we know that the blood supply of the meniscus it is via the lateral and the medial geniculate arteries, so both inferior and the superior. So we have the medial and lateral, superior and inferior ge medial geniculate arteries which provide the blood supply. How this uh, provide the blood supply? So in the outer part of the meniscus at the junction of the synovium and the capsule, they form a perimeniscal. They form a perimeniscal capillary plexus. So, plexus is formed a perimeniscal in the synovium and the capsule through which it supplies the outer part of the meniscus. So, because of this peculiar supply, we have the various zones here. So, we have discussed that it is the perimeniscal capillary plexus which provides supply from outside to the inside. So, we have the outer side which is a fully vascular area which is known as red red zone then we have a border of the vascular area which is a red white zone and lastly we, we have the avascular area where there is no blood supply and it is known as a white white zone so we have the three zones in the meniscus according to the vascular supply red 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 white and the white white zone now talking about the mechanism of injury how the meniscus will get injured so we know that it is a rotation uh, mechanism through which the meniscus will get injured because it get caught between the femur and the tibia now talking about the so if so superiorly we have the femur hair and inferiorly we have the tibia hair so as we know that posterior horn is the larger horn and it is more prone to injury so if this is the medial side so if here this is the medial side so the for the posterior on horn to get engaged into the between the femur and the tibia the tibia will have to external rotate or femur will have to internal rotate to engage the posterior horn between the tibia and the femur so i repeat if the posterior horn has to get injured it has to engage between the femur and the tibia so for that if this is the medial side tibia will have to external rotate so that the it engages between femur and tibia so if the tibia is fixed then femur has to internal rotate to engage the posterior horn of the medial meniscus so this is about the meniscus mechanism of injury so twisting and turning of the loaded joint 
will cause the entrapment of the meniscus between the joint and will cause the tear of the meniscus. So for medial meniscus, it is either the internal rotation of the femur over tibia or it is the external rotation of the tibia over the femur. In flexion, which forces the posterior segment to the center of joint and it get caught. Now the posterior horn is entrapped in this position and when we suddenly extend the knee joint, it is prone to injury. So similar is for the lateral meniscus. So for that, the femur will have to external rotate. So femur will external rotate over the tibia in the knee flex position, which will cause the posterior half of the lateral meniscus to get caught between the two bones. And then if we suddenly extend the knee joint, it will cause the tear of the meniscus. So we have already talked that the medial meniscus is more commonly injured. So we will repeat it again here that which meniscus is more commonly injured. So lateral meniscus because it is firmly attached to the popliteal muscle and to the ligament of Risverse and the Humphrey. It follows the lateral femoral condyle during the rotation. Also, when the tibia is rotated internally and the knee is flexed, the popliteus muscle why the, by the way of the arcuate ligament it draws the posterior segment of the lateral meniscus backwards, thereby preventing the meniscus from the getting caught between the two condyles, condyle of the femur and the tibia plateau. So because it is attached to the, the various ligament which attached it to the femur, so it moves with the femur during rotation. Also, the popliteus muscle, it pulls, it pulls the posterior horn backwards so that it is prevented from getting caught between the femur and the tibia. Now talking about the various features we, which will be, we will be finding. So in history of the meniscal tear patients, the patient will give a history of twisting injury with a pain, with a classical history of locking of the knee joint, with a history of giving away of the knee joint while ascending or descending the stairs, and plus on and off effusion might be there. On examination, there will be tenderness at the level of joint line. So joint line tenderness is specific for the meniscal injuries. Plus in chronic cases, there might be atrophy of the quadricep muscles. And plus there might be a clicks and snaps of the knee joint while flexion and extension of the knee joint. In chronic cases, these two features might be seen. Now lastly about the various tests that are important for the meniscal injury diagnosis. So most important is the McMurray test. So McMurray test is basically uh, based on the mechanism of, mechanism of injury only. That is we re elicit the mechanism of injury. So we acutely flex the knee joint and then we will provide the internal or external rotation force. So if we are checking the medial meniscus, we have already discussed that for medial meniscus to get injured, the tibia will have to external rotate so that the posterior horn of the medial meniscus get entrapped between the femur and the tibia. So if we are checking the medial meniscus, so we will cause the external rotation of the knee joint in the flex position and then we will suddenly extend it. So depending at what point we hear a click or patient experience a pain. So if from the flex position to the 90 degree, the patient experiences pain or we hear a click click sound that means that the injury is in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. If in the final range of motion we hear a click or pain is experienced by the patient that means that meniscal injury is in the a bit anteriorly. So that is about the McMurray test. Now another test which is not that commonly used is the Apple grinding test that in prone position we flex the knee joint and we provide a downward force and at the same time we rotate the knee joint. So this elicits a pain and it is a very painful test not that commonly used nowadays. So in prone position with the knee at 90 degree we provide a plus, plus we provide a uh, open up the knee joint by a cranial pull then we rotate it and we then 
a downward push is given. The other two common tests are the squat test and the Thessaly test. So in squat test, so in squat test we ask the patient to perform a several repetition of the full squatting. Uh, firstly in the internal rotation of the tibia and then in the external rotation of the tibia. So if the pain uh, is experienced in the internal rotation position, that means that it is the injury to the lateral meniscus. And if the pain is experienced in the external rotation position, that means it is an injury to the medial meniscus. And finally, we have the last test, which is the Thessaly test. It is considered to be the most sensitive and the most specific. So patient is allowed to stand over the injured leg and it is supported with the help of the hands by the doctor itself. In 20 degree of the flexion, we will rotate the patient so that the rotation occur at the knee joint. So clinician holds the patient outstretched hand for support while the patient will be standing. So knee is flexed to 20 degree and the patient rotates their body and the knee three times internally and externally. So test is positive if the symptoms are produced on the rotation. And again, depending on the rotation, we can judge that it is a intern, uh, lateral meniscus or the medial meniscus injury. So that was a brief overview of the anatomy of the meniscus and how to the various tests and the history points.